Attenuation Theory by Annie Treisman. In the previous units, we have learned about attention, the nature of attention, selective attention, and the filter theory of selective attention. Now, we move on to the next theory of selective attention called the attenuation theory postulated by Annie Trisman in the year 1960. Annie altered the methodology of the dichotic listening task. She played two messages, each presented to a different ear of the participant and she asked the participant to shadow one of the messages. At a certain point in the middle of the messages, the contents of the first and the second message were switched so that the second continued in the first and vice versa. Immediately after the messages were switched, the participant repeated one or two words from the unattended ear. To explain these findings, Annie Treisman proposed a modified version of the filter theory and called it the attenuation theory. Treisman argued that instead of considering unattended messages as completely blocked, their volume was instead turned down or attenuated. Attenuation is like turning down the volume. To illustrate, let us have a look at Shreya. Shreya is cooking in the kitchen. At the same time, there are other sources of sound in the other rooms like the television set, a baby crying, the radio, people talking. Shreya has to now turn down or attenuate the other sounds in order to attend to the most important one. Treisman explained that incoming messages are subjected to three kinds of analysis. One, the messages' physical properties are analyzed such as the pitch, loudness, etc. Second, the message is then analyzed linguistically, that is, the message is passed into syllables and words. Three, the message then undergoes a semantic analysis, that is, processing the meaning of the message. Some meaningful units have permanently lowered thresholds, that is, they are recognizable even at low volumes. Meaningful units like words that have subjective importance, for instance, one's name can be recognized even at low volumes. To illustrate this, let us look at Frida who meets her friends at a marketplace. Frida is engrossed in her conversation with her friends. Frida's attention is suddenly drawn when she hears someone outside her group calling out her name. Until Frida's name was spoken, she heard nothing that was spoken out of her group. But the sound of her name grabbed her attention. Words that signal danger, like fire, watch out, also have permanently lowered thresholds. To illustrate the above, let us look at Jim, who works as a receptionist at a travel agency. Jim's job requires him to attend to calls and take bookings telephonically enter the records on the computer 
besides attending to customers who personally approach him for bookings. Out of all the chaos on the reception, Jim's attention is suddenly diverted when someone shouted, Fire! Jim immediately runs to see what has gone wrong and calls the fire station. And also makes an effort to put off the fire using an extinguisher. Until Jim heard the word fire, he was only concentrating on what his customer had to say over the phone. But the word signaling danger grabbed his attention and made him react quickly. Hence, we can see that a few words of subjective importance or ones that signal danger can be recognizable even at low volumes. However, the context of a word in a message can temporarily lower its threshold. For instance, if a person hears the lion is the king of the the word jungle is primed, that is, it is ready to be recognized. Even if the word jungle were to occur in the unattended channel, little effort would be needed to hear and process it. This explains why people in Treisman's experiment on dichotic listening, when the messages played in the ears were switched, the previous words in the sentence primed the participants to recognize the words that follow. According to Treisman, people process only how much is necessary to separate the attended from the unattended message. For instance, if two messages differ only semantically, we process both through the level of meaning and select which message to attend to based on this analysis. The attenuation and filter theories differ from each other in the following aspects. 1. The attenuation theory allows for different kinds of analysis of all messages, whereas the filter theory allows for only one. 2. Filter theory holds that unattended messages are discarded, whereas the attenuation theory holds that unattended messages are weakened, but the information that they contain will still be available.